Yeah, John's coming on in to give us the latest and greatest news when it comes to everything UAP. And before we get started tonight, we actually have a very, very important announcement to make. Earlier today, I made an announcement on our social media that we are going to be moving Lynn Wallington's Saturday and Sunday shows back a couple of hours. And we are going to follow it up with an after-hours show on YouTube and Twitch. And eventually, we'll get to the podcast format for another show. So realistically, what's going to happen is the fedora-wearing John Hudson, along with Big Willie Townsend, and Gemma Jade are going to come together to bring an audience show together for you, the listener, and it's going to be fantastic. They're going to be bringing in all the hot topics of the week. Every now and again, they'll bring in someone to join their panel to talk about those hot topics of the week, and it's an exciting move for us. Uh, it, it's uh, going to bring Lynn in a few hours earlier, and Lynn is going to continue to do some fantastic work that she does with her interview skills on the weekend. And then something different where everybody gets a chance to participate in the After Hours show on our YouTube channel and Twitch. So I'm very much looking forward to this, John, and congratulations to you. And thank to you. Billy and to Gemma for joining the team and uh, being a part of the weekend broadcast. Oh, it's it's going to be it's going to be epic. I'm really looking forward to working with both of them. They've both done some really interesting stuff lately, and I think we're going to make a good combination. Where you know, uh, you know, you know, you're all going to have someone to you know kind of connect with and relate to a little bit, and uh, we're going to have some very different points of view. And uh, and so hopefully it's it's going to make for a really good show for you guys. And and if it doesn't, it's kind of your guys' fault because it's all going to be based on your content. So there you go. Yeah, well, it's literally going to be my fault because I'm. <laughs> Well said, sir. But, well, uh, but, well but you know what on 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 the saturday night show eventually there may be some chad smith sightings mm -hmm. and uh, and other people and sunday there's going to be a plethora of hot topics as well so i'm very much excited that show will be starting the second weekend of december and, and that means if you want you get five hours of spaced out radio on saturday and sunday if mm -hmm. you're if you're up for it i totally agree and I'm very excited to have all of you guys uh, coming in. And, uh, you know, it, it's very easy to see the professionalism in you, John, in Willie, and in Gemma, and the, the amount of knowledge that the three of you have. I'm very excited about it. Very excited about it. And, you know, I we, we got to get everything sorted out. We got a number of weeks here to get everything sorted out. That's going And those weeks are going to go fast. Trust me. And, but I'm telling you, I think this is the, the real cool thing to do for our audience and expanding it. Lynn does such a professional job on Saturdays and Sundays. She is our rock on the weekends. And then adding you guys to take the audience into the after hours and the late nights, especially on the East Coast and in the central time zone mm -hmm. and, and over in Europe that people are listening. I think it's it's going to be amazing, amazing programming that keeps the hot button topics that we love around here alive for a little bit longer on the weekends. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're, we're all going to have a really good time. We're going to get a lot of different topics going on and, and uh, it should be a blast. I'm really looking forward to it. And, and, you know, thanks Dave for the opportunity you're giving all of us. And, and uh, thank you for the listeners for all your support. We really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you, my friend. I really do appreciate you. And, uh, you know, let's, let's see where it goes. All right. Let's get to the unbiased UFO report here. Because I believe we are starting off with NASA once again. Or no, that's last night's. That's last hmm. night's. I'm way, yes. ahead, way we, behind. We're starting with, with Tucker. Yes, Tucker Carlson joined by Tom Rogan to discuss yes. the Robert Salas event. Yes, yes. So this this was a this was a fun one to 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 pick up on because first off you got you got Tucker stepping up to the plate once again and you know uh, I know everyone has opinions about him I do too right I have my own challenges with, with, with Tucker um, but you know we really appreciate his effort for for this movement and and he's not just focusing on Elizondo he's he's moved on to other important topics like Robert Salas's um, uh, event that he did uh, in Washington about uh, nukes and, and UFOs and uh, and he didn't just bring on you know Nick Pope or, or something like that he actually brought on Tom Rogan 
and they had a good conversation. They showed um, some uh, testimony of of, uh, of some of the people. Uh, Tucker car- covered it in a very serious way. He tried very hard to bring attention to the seriousness of it and and his frustration that it hasn't been widely covered. And it was a it was a good it was a good it was a good you know short segment on the topic that. I mean, let's face it. I don't know if he still is, but for a while, Tucker was the number one news show in the country. So a lot of lot of eyes saw that episode. So it's good stuff for all of us. So for people who aren't familiar with Robert Salas and his event, what happened there? Yeah. So basically, this was um uh, this was kind of a, a of an active uh, a, a live action rerun. Um, in that essentially this is a was a repeat with um with some new with some new folks, some new very important folks, where essentially a sort of mock um you know kind of a mock sort of congressional event is set up where where you know you would have testimony and stuff um you know as you would in a normal session and but it's set up with um essentially a you know several very credible. Um, very heroic um, uh, former service members who were were all in a position during their time in the service to see a uh, an unidentified object interfere with the launch systems of our ICBMs, and um, this is this is about as serious as you get. And um, this is the one place, in my opinion, in this whole scenario that really can be considered a threat. And um, and the the new addition um, this time is, is the gentleman that um, whose uh, name I can't remember now, unfortunately, but who talks about the uh, UFO he filmed where he saw a UFO fly around the missile and actually shoot laser beams or, or light beams at the missile and actually interfere with its launch. And um, and so that's testimony we did not hear before. And so this all this testimony was done um, up in Washington or over in Washington, I should say. And uh, it was all streamed online and, and it's still on YouTube and you can go watch it. And I highly recommend everyone does. This is a story that's almost 50 years old. That continued after the last time he did this. It wasn't like it all was over at that point. It continued to happen after that. This is an ongoing issue. I understand that. Is it still happening today? I don't know of the last known case where it's happened. And there's been some speculation that um, whoever has been interested in those uh, delivery systems have have now adjusted their interest to energy production systems. And that that's why many of the of our of, of our nuclear fleet has been has been um, engaged with. Um, And so, you know, as far as actually when the last incident was, I'm sorry, I don't have that data with me. The last one I heard of, I believe, was a while ago. But the problem is, is that there's a huge lag on when these get reported because you can't report them within any with any reasonable time around when they happened because of of the NDAs and the security oaths these gentlemen take. So there's always going to be a huge delay of, of probably at least a decade or more between when an event happens and when we get to hear about it. All right, let's move on here. Back to NASA, Bill Nelson coming out saying that he believes well, we're not and, alone. And, and what's awesome, we talked about this a couple of days ago, but the reason why I wanted to bring it up again is I cannot believe the attention this is getting. And to me, it's been very, very interesting because, you know, if you've been paying attention to the periodicals of the United States for a while, you, you can see that there, there are tiers of 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 media groups right where you know this group will become aware of it and then this group will become aware of it and this group will become aware of it and you can kind of see it filter through and um i could not believe and i basically did a, a little image that you, you guys will be able to, to to look at the notes that i mean you're talking about not only so first off uh unidentified, unidentified aerial phenomenon uap 1949 on twitter he put out one of the first messages showing the clip of bill nelson's statements his that single tweet alone right now or as of my my note taking earlier today has 565,000 views now um you know i've i've gotten i think one of my twitter messages to get over 100k um barely and it was like one and and that's in like nine years five this is this is an insane reaction to one message on twitter so that alone shows the interest but then you go on and you're talking about the hill you're talking about um life science you're talking about um i mean a quartz you're talking about um i mean the list goes on and on and on like i mean 
so many it, it actually it got to a point where I, I have this one newsreader that i use and i have a ufo subject button and when i clicked on it like the first like eight articles that came up like like seven of them were all about his speech like th this is having a huge impact on people and to me it's it's one it's really interesting because it shows to me that nasa still has the floor and they they will be the ones i think that are probably in the best, best position to be making announcements which i'm very surprised by to be very honest and um and it, and it shows that that you know independent of what else is going on and where, where you know someone like elizondo might be trying to you know slow things down a little bit as far as the information getting out you know this happens and boom uh, the reaction to it is tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Well, if anybody should know, it's NASA. And you and I debated this in the after hour show just a, a couple of nights ago. And, I, and like I said with Dan Warren, I'm still very upset about yes. this. Yes. Very yeah, upset. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, I and, I, and I wish more people would be upset over this, that NASA is playing dumb on this subject that they're just getting into this when we know for years they have had interactions with ufos and their own astronauts have come back and stated that they have had interactions with ufos during launches and well into space and yep, yep. no ab absolutely and um and and the thing is is and i'm sorry my my earpiece died so give me a sec here so i can swap into the other one um but yeah no but the thing is i think bill nelson is essentially in the same position that you are in that you know i mean he just came into this you know he's only been the administrator for a short period of time and um and you know and and he only has access to a certain amount of information you know and and other administrators also only had certain and or certain groups only have access to certain information. I mean, a lot of people don't know how many divisions there are in NASA, right? The NASA near me, they have a huge supercomputing division, right? Those guys are are so head down into what they do, they're completely unaware of what everyone else does. So my guess is is that he's in a very similar situation that you are, and that he's hearing about all these other things and going. What do you mean you guys are telling me you guys aren't working on this? You, someone's got to be working. I mean, I guarantee you that he's going through some of the same frustration you are. Well, I hope so. I would like to hear him say that, though. <laughs> and I realize in his position it's tough. But if you're, you know, enough about this cover-up. Who's for the people on this subject? That's what irks me. Who is for the people? And with NASA now getting into the game of UFOs, I mean, SETI has sat there for 35 plus years and got nothing except one strange radio hit. And and you you didn't believe how many people retire from NASA and go work at SETI. Exactly. It's, it's, an, it's an astounding number of people. No, but uh, I don't. I know, I don't... Dave. I know. I know. But, but the one thing you have to remember is, is that NASA serves at the honor and discretion of the president of the United States, right? Just like everyone else does. And so it wasn't like, you know, NASA was deciding on their own, you know, we need a lot. I'm not saying that maybe in the beginning, there wasn't one project manager that said, oh man, you know, we can't tell anyone about this, but we need to get someone involved. You know, I, I have no idea. I'm sure there were people that took actions that they probably weren't supposed to, but ultimately, um, the classification of this stuff is not under the jurisdiction of NASA. NASA does not have control over what's classified and what is not. That's decided by someone else for them. Right. I know. And I understand that. And I just don't understand why now they're all of a sudden getting into the UFO game. I have so many questions over this. So many well, I, questions. I, I, I agree. I agree with what Dan said before, and it was something as similar I said to you uh, the other day, and that is that I firmly believe that if if Bill Nelson had not been the one appointed, that there's a very good chance that NASA would be doing what the Air Force has been doing up till now, and just whistling Dixie. It's really unbelievable, really unbelievable. John, thank you for another incredible UAP report.